Teachers, welcome to Introduction to Maryland History Day, a webinar for new History Day teachers. Thank you for watching. We are so glad to have you involved in this program, and we really do believe that this project will help build your students' skills in a number of ways. In this webinar, I'm going to give you an overview of the History Day program, including what it is, how to prepare for it, and a breakdown of the project steps, and some tips for how to implement this with your students, including tips for working with English learners and tips for doing this remotely. First of all, what is History Day? History Day is a long-term history research project, and students will share their work through their choice of creative presentations. And it culminates in competitions at the school, district, state, and national levels. Maryland History Day is an affiliate of the national organization, National History Day, or NHD, and we get the rule book, judging sheets, and basic guidance from them to help keep everything consistent throughout all the contest levels. Students have five choices as to what those creative presentations can look like, and they can work either individually or as a group. This is one of the ways that they have an element of choice and agency in this project. They can pick the format that speaks to their strengths and their talents, and also the format that complements the topic that they chose. The research paper is the most straightforward. It's a paper with introduction, body, and conclusion, and it's the only format that must be done individually. Performance is the most creative format and the one that sort of strays the furthest from regular academic output because they are writing dialogue instead of nonfiction expository writing. Students will write a script, they'll decide what props and costumes to use, and they will act out their story. For documentary, it's really amazing what young people are capable of today because there are software and programs that make video editing so easy. They can cut together historical video clips, interviews, stills, music, and voiceover narration. And young people are really quick to pick up on these tech skills. The exhibit is the most popular format, and the most common type of exhibit is the trifold, like you see in the picture here. And finally, the website is great for students who already have some tech skills, and also a way to learn those tech skills, which are becoming more and more valuable. NHG has put out their own web building platform called NHG Web Central that students in this category must use. Just to talk a little bit more about the levels of competition, um, at each level, judges will evaluate the projects and decide who will advance to the next level. Uh, the district competitions are typically held in February and March. The students who move, move on from those will go to the Maryland State Contest, which will be in May, and we usually host around 700 students at that level. And then the best students at the state contest will move on to nationals, uh, and about 60 students from Maryland will move forward. And those are held in June. Now I wanna stress how valuable this project is from a curriculum standpoint. It directly hits on many social studies standards, including the skills needed for the MCAP eighth grade assessment. First, it's inquiry-based. The project follows the inquiry arc, which you can see at the bottom of this slide. Students will develop a research question about their historical topic, and they'll spend several weeks investigate, investigating and refining that question based on the information they find. Finally, they'll make and share their conclusions. This project has a strong element of primary source analysis. As students do their research, they will evaluate the usefulness of the sources they find and use them as evidence as they make their conclusions. This is also great practice in corroborating the information they find in different sources. Next, students will create and support their own historical argument about their topic based on the evidence they find in their research. And finally, this one's a little more general, but this project supports the development of 21st century skills like critical thinking, communication, collaboration, and creativity. 
So if you have been trying to find ways to shoehorn these standards into your lesson plans, the History Day project has it all in one place in a way that feels authentic to your students because it's not just isolated practice, it's part of this process of creating a final product. Getting started, how can you as teachers prepare to do History Day in the fall? It's really all about collaboration and communication. The first thing I would suggest is to meet with your social studies colleagues at your school who are also doing History Day and develop a timeline and come up with some preliminary dates for those assignment deadlines and decide how you're going to plan it into your weekly schedule. The next thing to do is get your school librarians and or media specialists on board. Work with them to coordinate research sessions. If your school has access to databases like Gale, have the librarian drop in to give a tutorial on how to use it, or coordinate some times for students to ask the librarians for research help. And finally, communicate with the parents. Start communicating early in the school year. Send periodic letters, flyers, or emails home to introduce parents to History Day and to tell them when the contest is approaching. Consider holding a parent informational session at the beginning of the school year. In the future, you might hold this in person, but this year you can use Zoom or Google Meet and the Maryland History Day outreach staff, and I would be happy to lead that parent session to answer any questions they might have. Please get in touch if you're interested. On this slide, I've got a sample timeline to help you wrap your head around how this project is broken down. If you present it as one big project, it can be overwhelming for your students, but when you break it down into these smaller chunks, it becomes more manageable for them. I don't intend for this timeline to be prescriptive. You do not need to use this exact model. This is just to give you an idea of what's possible. In terms of classroom hours, I've worked with teachers who have a dedicated history day period once a week, maybe every Friday, where they help their students with a skill like writing the bibliography and then give time for the students to work on their projects and get support if they need it. Other teachers do this every other week. You can develop a schedule that works for you. All right, so the first step for the students is choosing the topic of their project. And this is really the most fun step for them. This is the other part of the project where students can exercise choice and pick topics that they are invested in. And that's what's going to motivate them through this project. The only limitation that they have is that their topic must relate to the annual theme and they will prove that connection to the theme throughout their whole project. The theme for the 2021 contest is communication in history, the key to understanding. The theme is always very broad, so it can be interpreted in many different ways. I think that this year many students will be drawn toward the technological advancements that have made communication possible, like the telegraph, the telephone, television, and radio. But having this limitation can sometimes push students to think creatively about a subject they're interested in. For example, I've got a picture of Frederick Douglass here, and he was an orator, he wrote his autobiography, and he founded the North Star newspaper all to communicate his position as an abolitionist. So if you have students who are interested in black history or the history of slavery, you might uh, encourage them to make those connections. You might look at something like disability history and the advancements that have helped people with disabilities communicate, like Braille, American Sign Language, or voice output communication aids. You can look at codes like military codes or nautical codes. You think, can think about protest as a form of communication and how different movements have conveyed their messages. Or you can pick just about any event in history and look at how it was communicated to the public through mass media. No matter what your students choose, they should remember that understanding is the other half of that theme. How did their historical event help people understand something? And what did they understand? So we at Maryland Humanities have developed a resource to help students search for topics and kickstart their research. The Thinkport Inquiry Kits are located at the URL on this slide, and we have almost 200 primary source sets on US history, 
world history, and U.S. government. This next slide shows you what's inside a kit. At the top, there are three thinking questions to guide investigation. And then most kits have five primary sources and one level appropriate secondary source. Students can use this as a jumping off point before they do more research. This is also a great resource for classroom activities on primary source analysis, and it can work especially well with remote teaching. The next and most important step of the project is the research. Students are expected to use both primary and secondary sources to inform the story they're telling, and they will interpret those primary sources on their own and use them as evidence for the argument that they develop. There are lots of places that students can go to find primary and secondary sources, and we have curated lists of excellent websites to use both on our website in the student section and in our Google Drive teacher resource packet. Students will create an annotated bibliography, and for a lot of them, it might be their first time doing one, but we have models and scaffolds to help them along. And as teachers, you can connect with museums and libraries to see if they offer research help, and you can direct students toward the research tools that your school or school district offers. For example, bibliographical tools like Noodle Tools or EasyBib, or research sites like Gale or JSTOR. After the students do their research, they will all start to plan out the narrative of their project. And no matter what final format they choose, there are some basic elements that all projects should touch upon. Many of these points are based on the NHD rubric. Having this outline as a scaffold will help students feel less overwhelmed about the project as a whole. So all projects will have a thesis statement. They'll all discuss the historical context of their event and the events building up to it. Um, in the body, they will tell the main story and use those primary sources as evidence. And then finally, they'll talk about the short and long-term impacts of that event. This next slide puts those outline elements in a visual format. So this is a sample project organizer for an exhibit, but some teachers like how this allows students to lay out all their main points on one page. When I do classroom outreach, I like to show examples of great projects so that students know what's possible. I encourage you to share some examples with your students, which you can find at our website, mdhumanities.org or at nhd.org. Have your students see if they can pick out the thesis or use examples to kickstart a discussion about what makes a project good. When the projects are finished, your, your students will come to the contest phase and they will face the judges. Judges will review the projects using the NHD rubrics, and they'll also look at the process paper, a short work the students will write to describe how they chose their topic, how it relates to the theme, and how they went about researching and creating their project. Judges will review the annotated bibliographies, and they'll interview the students as well. This part of it really gives the students a chance to take ownership of the work that they've done. And as stressful as it seems for them going in, often students say that this ended up being their favorite part of the project because they finally got to talk about what they were doing. Judges will provide feedback, which is returned to the students, and the students can use that feedback to improve their projects if they move on to the next level. There are new judging rubrics this year, and I won't go over these in detail right now. You can find them in the Teacher Resource Google Drive folder, but you should become familiar with them and make sure your students have them as well. They can use them as checklists for peer review in the later stages of the project. So you can see here 80% of the judging consideration goes to historical quality. And the remaining 20% is clarity of presentation. And that's a good thing to remind the students if they seem to be paying more attention to appearance than to content. 
So we strongly believe that History Day is for all students, your English learners, your students with IEPs, your students reading below grade level, they can all benefit from this model. So in that spirit, I wanted to talk very briefly about doing History Day with English learners. And this photo here is a team of English learner students from Louisiana who went to the national contest a few years ago. First of all, why does History Day work with your English learners? We know that project-based learning is great for building language skills. It's an authentic assignment rather than rote language practice, and this helps them retain both vocabulary and content knowledge. Next, there's an element of choice that gives students agency in their learning. Your L's can show you who they are and what's important and interesting to them, whether that is a story relating to their heritage or not. Finally, History Day lets you amplify all students' voices. Projects are displayed publicly. In past years, they would be shared inside the school. This year, you'll have to get a little creative and use social media. Uh, but this sharing is essential for allowing your L's to feel heard and to feel like they are integrated into the class. Next, I have a few tips for doing History Day with your L's. So first, work with your school's bilingual paraprofessionals or ESOL teachers to create a history, plan, history day plan for your L's. And second, communicate with their parents. So the little icons that I have on the screen are from Talking Points, which is an app that you can use in your web browser or on your phone that allows you to write a message in English and then the recipient can choose which language they want to read the message in. Um, and they're offering this to teachers for free, which is great. Um, and this, I think, will be a game changer for communicating with, um, with students' parents who also do not speak English as their first language. Next, you're going to model and scaffold each step, and that's something that you'll do for every student. Um, next, let, their, let your student's first language be an asset. They can do research in their first language and they might pick a topic that takes advantage of that. Let your student's prior knowledge be an asset. Our L's who are newcomers will be coming from different school systems that teach different topics in their social studies classes and let them take advantage of having stronger knowledge in some subjects. Finally, be flexible. Modifications can be made. Uh, modifications can also be made for your IEP students and your students reading below grade level. And for those, the contest might not be the focus, but the process will have just as much value in helping to build these students' skills. All right, moving on, let's talk about how this will work with remote teaching. So every year we put out a packet of teacher resources for History Day. And for the last couple years, this has been available publicly on Google Drive. So if you follow the URL at the bottom of the screen, you'll find it under Teacher Resources. This folder includes student worksheets for different steps along their History Day process. It includes online research guides. So we give you some of those websites that have really good quality primary sources. We have all the official NHD materials like the rule book, the theme book, and judging rubrics. We have teaching guides, sample timelines, and other planning materials. And finally, we've got a sample student folder with just those student-facing documents in it. So since you are all using online learning management systems this year, I'm going to give you some instructions for using our student worksheets from our big Google Drive on Google Classrooms and on Canvas. So I'm going to start with Google Classroom. So the first thing you're gonna need to do is go to that Maryland History Day Teacher Resources folder, right click the title, and you'll want to create a shortcut to that. And that shortcut will end up in the main area of my drive for your Google account. So then after you've made a shortcut in your drive, um, you'll go back to Google Classroom, create an assignment, and then select add next to the little paper clip, and then select Google Drive. 
And then this box will pop up that shows you um, everything that you've got on Drive. Click on the My Drive tab and select the Maryland History Day Teacher Resource folder. And then you'll be able to open up that folder and the folders inside and locate the worksheet that you want to use within that folder and then press insert. And finally, uh, so that assignment will pop up in the assignment that you've created and you'll want to set it to make a copy for each student. So each student is editing their own version of that Google Doc. Then you're going to click the assign button in the upper right hand corner um, like you would do if you're assign make, you know, make, finalizing the assignment um, and you're going to get this dialog box that says can't attach this file. So don't be deterred by this. All you need to do is press copy and Google Classroom will automatically make a copy of that Google Doc for you. So you don't need to do it manually. Um, and once you do that, the assignment will be finalized and it'll go out to your students. So everything's fine. All right. So Next, um, I'm going to show you how to do this in Canvas. So if you're using Canvas this year, you can still use Google, Google Docs in your assignments, but there is an extra step you need to take since you don't own the Maryland History Day Docs. And that step is right here at the beginning. So again, you're going to go into Google Drive. You're going to go into that Maryland History Day teacher resource folder and find the assignment that you want to work with. Find that Google Doc, right click it and click on make a copy like I show in this screen grab. And again, that copy that you make is going to go to the main My Drive area of your Google account. Then you're going to go into Canvas and you're going to create a Canvas assignment and change the submission type to external tool. And then it will prompt you to find the external tool. So you're going to click on find and then in that lower picture, select Google Docs cloud assignment. And then again, it'll open up a box for you that has all of your Google Drive contents in it. So you should find the Google Doc worksheet that you want to work with, click Submit, and then finish publishing the assignment. All right, so now some more general tips for remote teaching with History Day. First of all, have students save ongoing work and task lists and checklists in Google Drive or somewhere else on the cloud. Um, you want to have it somewhere else. Mistakes always happen, but in Google Drive, everything is saved automatically and you can see the edit history in case anything gets deleted accidentally. Next, you can use, if you have this feature, you can use breakout rooms for peer feedback. So especially since students are working on their own nowadays, it's important to get that collaborative feel back into this project and let them interact with other students in any way that they can. Next, make the project work visible. Like I said before, uh, during the school, during our regular school year, you might have projects up around the school, um, but this year you might need to get creative. So let students give virtual classroom presentations to their classmate. Also post on your school's website, post in the newsletter or on social media about History Day. And this can really help to build enthusiasm about the project and about the contests. And it'll build morale and get everyone excited about it. All right, so um, that's about it for me. I just want to mention that we are still offering outreach. So in a normal school year, I would be going out to classrooms and presenting to students and helping them every step of the way. And I would happy to, I'd be happy to still do that, but in a virtual format this year. Um, so I can give presentations on uh, an introduction to History Day, conducting research, primary versus secondary sources, crafting a thesis. Uh, I can give project feedback sessions for, I can do individual conferencing, conferencing with groups, or any custom topic that you like. And so I've got the URL at the bottom there. You can find it on our website, the form to sign up for virtual outreach. 
Um, so some ways for you to stay informed. Uh, I encourage you to sign up for our Maryland History Day teacher e-news where you can uh, get alerts about professional development that's coming up soon or uh, reminders about different steps of the History Day timeline. And finally, this year, we're hoping to start get started with some Maryland History Day teachers monthly meetings on Zoom. So stay tuned for info about that. Finally, uh, if you need anything, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact any of us on the Maryland History Day team. We would be happy to help you. All right, thank you for watching.